Can we get a year for hip hop? Can we get a hell yeah, Cleveland? Hip hop in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame before I turn it over, because Def Jam, in the words of Bill Adler, is the last great record label. And this man behind me is going to finish it off because, like chess is to electric blues, Def Jam is to hip hop. And this man helped build the house. So as a resident, can you give three and a half minutes to hip hop and the Beastie Boys from me? Help me out, y'all. Now here's a little story I got to tell about three bad brothers you know so well. It started way back in history with Ad Rock MCA and number three, Mike D. I know I could read from the teleprompter, but I wrote it down. <laughs> I won't take much of your time. There's no adequate measure for the impact that the Beastie Boys had on rap music and yours truly, Public Enemy, during our formative years. <laughs> Artistically, just like my man back here, they are our role models. They gave us some of our richest support, and that's uncharacteristic of many advisors in this game. They led and lead by example. The very first time the Beastie Boys headlined their own tour, the License to L tour, that hit the road in January of 1987. They invited us to join the bill in April 1987. The lineup was the Beastie Boys, Murphy's Law, and Public Enemy. Watching them tear the house up, just like 9,000 here tonight, tearing the house up. We learned so much about the importance of a great stage show, just like my man back here. They made us rethink what we should do on stage and affirm for us how important our own Beastie Boy, who calls himself Flavor Flav, <laughs> might be to our success. In that way, the Beastie Boys literally helped us to get our act together by more than living up to their name night after night on the road. They were, and still are, one of the greatest live acts in music, people. How could we not learn from the way this group has challenged the conventions in the music business? How they made up their own rules about what it meant to be world-class hip-hop cats. After License to L, the Beasties left the Def Jam label and broke with their producer, Rick Rubin, and still kept it going on. Everyone wondered, and how many people were pessimistic about how the hell they were gonna to top their multi-platinum debut, License to L. But their second album, Paul's Boutique, broke the mold. And with it, they accomplished everything they hoped for. They kept their band together through a challenging period when most groups would have broken up and gone home. They proved that they could produce themselves when too many folks wrongly believed they were puppets of marketing and production. And they insisted on maturing as a band and as human beings when the easier thing would have been just to come back with a formula that it might have been like the L2.0. It was the courage and self-respect that we all learned from. And so like them, we made sure never to take the easy way out, just to repeat a hit record for hit record's sake. Never to compromise our faith in ourselves and our artistry. Besides, they were the first hip hop group on the World Wide Web in 1993, people. Two more minutes for hip hop, people. One of the most, got to soak it in, the third hip hop group ever, got to soak it in. One of the most admirable qualities about the Beastie Boys is that stayed so true to the game over the years. No matter what was going on with them 
or hip hop culture in general. As far as I'm concerned, I quote myself, the trend towards individual, individualism in hip hop has become a plague. Yes, I quote myself. It has crippled the art form. Yet through it all, the Beastie Boys remain a team of MCs in the style of the groups that inspired them, the Treacherous Three, the Crash Crew, the 2007 inductees to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Grandmaster Flash, and the Furious Five MCs. And the 2009 inductees salute Ron DMC, Jam Master J. And let us not forget their DJs throughout the years, Andre, Dr. Dre, Brown, my friend. DJ Hurricane, Mixmaster Mike, and DJ Double R, better known as Rick Rubin. In rock and roll, a band still gotta be a band. It's the same thing with hip hop and the Beastie Boys remain a model for us all. Be together, play together, stay together, together forever. Couple paragraphs, one more minute for hip hop. Damn, that was a long minute. Soak it in, hip-hop and rap music. Been around 30 years, got to do it. 37, really. Time and time again, in word and in practice, the Beastie Boys honor hip-hop's founding templates. As true musicians, they move beyond drum machines and repetitive samples and sometimes pick up their own instruments. It's their way of paying tribute to the musicians who preceded them, who built the foundations of hip-hop. More than many, many situations out there, the Beastie Boys have evolved. In particular, I'm thinking about somebody who wasn't able to join us tonight, Adam Yout, salute MCA. I feel him here tonight, y'all feel him here tonight, and LL got more to say about that. He belongs here with the greatest, and it was MCA who committed the Beastie Boys to their lengthy campaign for freedom for Tibet, a campaign that not only helped to shine a light on Tibet's struggle for independence, but allowed the Beastie Boys to move from fighting for their right to party to partying for their right to fight. <laughs> Lastly, no matter what their lyrical subjects are on stage parodies, one thing the Beastie Boys never were to me was a joke. They remind us that this is a craft. We was talking about this on the side. This is a craft, it's not a hustle. And I couldn't be more honored to induct this group along with this man behind me because they represent the best of the hip hop and rap music idiom. I dig love and always thank them for doing the hard work of paving those roads for musicians all over the world and to rock rap and roll on those roads, especially before people took us seriously as artists. Rap music is here to stay because it pays homage. So, may we all be as professional, distinctive, powerful as this group coming up right here, and as this man. The Beastie Boys are indeed three bad brothers who made history. Now, I give to you the man that damn near put up the foundations of Def Jam, and I'm always glad to just say, I know, I see him on TV, I say, I say, damn, I'm happy to know that man. <laughs> Ladies love Cool J, LL Cool J. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? Wow, this is an amazing moment. You know, I'll never forget what I thought the very first time that Rick Rubin introduced me to the Beastie Boys, you know? I thought, what a bunch of punks. <laughs> Some things never change. Then a few moments later, I thought to myself that I probably have about 30 years to write my speech inducting these three punks into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What can I say, people? I've just always had a funny sense about these things. But the truth is that I've come here tonight to praise those little troublemakers, not to make fun of them. Because the record shows 
that from their humble beginnings, okay, well, you know, maybe not so humble beginnings, my buddies, the Beastie Boys, have made rock, rap, and just plain old music history. And that's not bad for three punks who started out their career singing about cookie puss. Not long after that, the Beasties exploded, declaring early on, you gotta fight! Well, from those early Def Jam days on, when rap was just finding its feet, the Beastie Boys, Mike, Adam, and Adam, have fought long and hard, not just for their fight, right to fight and party and have fun, but for all of our rights to party, even if that meant no sleep till Brooklyn. All right? They've grown up to become great men, good citizens, and one of the most enduring and influential groups in music history. And trust me, that would have not been a popular bet back in the day when we were all just punks from different neighborhoods, all applying for our licenses to ill. Right from the start, the Beasties were pretty fly for white guys. Pretty fly for white guys. And they brought a whole new attitude to the look of rap and the feel of hip hop. Remember, this was before Eminem, and I love him. This is before Eminem. This is before Vanilla Ice. Dung, 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 dung. The Beasties also brought their own spirit, wit, and flavor to the music because before the Beasties, a lot of rappers, first and foremost, selling ego and boastfulness. And... But the Beasties, <laughs> that's funny. But the Beasties brought something new, pure, and great to the game. They brought obnoxiousness, big attitude, and fresh humor, and they proved once and for all that rap could come from any street, not just a few. You see, Run DMC brought rap to the edge of suburbia. Beasties drove it right into the center of town. So, I, just on a side note, let me just tell you a little something about our history. Um, if it wasn't, the reason I'm here tonight and the reason this was so important to me is because if it wasn't for the Beastie Boys, I wouldn't have my career that I have today because the Beastie Boys actually played my demo tape for Rick Rubin in the NYU dormitory and got me my break. A lot of people don't know that. So this thing is connected in a really strange way. They were amazing, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I think about us being on tour and, you know, me and Adam Yuck sipping Brass Monkey and him kicking me in my chest for no apparent reason. It's heartwarming, really. And they, then they hit with tracks like Sabotage. The Beastie Boys created a more perfect union of rap and rock than anyone ever did, and they never let us down. Ever since the Beastie stayed together and supported our world, and each other in good times and in bad, they've been great. So God bless the Beastie Boys. And look, let me just cut to the chase. Woo! Let me cut to the chase. It's my true honor to stand beside Chuck D and induct the Beastie Boys. Come on, say it with me. Into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame!